Inflation is like an illness, and the medicine needs to be tailored to the specific problem. Otherwise, you could make things a lot worse. And right now, the Fed has no control over the main drivers of rising prices. But the Fed can slow demand by getting a lot of people fired and making families poorer. That was Senator Elizabeth Warren during the Senate Banking Committee hearing with Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. Now, uh, there has been much discussion and debate about inflation and how to combat inflation. And the Federal Reserve has decided that it makes sense to raise interest rates in order to uh, cool this very hot market, this very hot economy. In other words, there are there's too much demand too little supply, and the best way to deal with that to tame inflation is to lower demand by lowering the amount of money Americans have in their pockets. And so when you increase interest rates, what happens is it becomes more expensive to borrow money. And if it's more expensive to borrow money, you're spending more money on interest and less money. You have less money in your pocket to to buy things like homes or cars. Uh, for the banking industry, for corporations, uh, they have less money to essentially invest in themselves and make themselves richer, which is what they've been doing um, since uh, the 2008 economic collapse. Uh, so there are both good parts of raising the interest rate, particularly putting a stop to the very rich becoming even richer. Uh, But there are downsides as well. And so this is an interesting discussion because Elizabeth Warren's take here has some components I disagree with, but I do think that she uh, makes a lot of great points as well. So without further ado, why don't we get to Elizabeth Warren pointing out exactly how disastrous uh, raising interest rates could be for ordinary Americans. But before we do that, uh, I do wanna go to the next video where um, She really tries to question whether the Federal Reserve even has the power to deal with where the key inflationary issues lie. Let's watch. Let's start with gas prices. The price of gas is up 40% since Russia invaded Ukraine in February. Chair Powell, will gas prices go down as a result of your interest rate increase? I would not think so, no. Okay. Um, And... um, That matters because gas prices are one of the single biggest drivers of inflation. Energy prices overall drove a third of the inflation last month, but the Fed's tools, as you say, have no impact here. So let's look at another necessity, food. Price of groceries is up nearly 12% this year. Americans feel the pinch. No matter how much groceries cost, people still got to eat. Chair Powell, will the Fed's interest rate increases bring food prices down for families? I wouldn't say so, no. Okay. So what Warren is trying to do with that line of questioning is important because there are misunderstandings and also intentional misinformation in regard to what is causing inflation. So the idea that the Federal Reserve can do something about higher gas prices is ridiculous because as we know, gas prices are controlled by multinational corporations. The corporations that are drilling, the corporations that are using these fossil fuels and making decisions about prices, about where to export the resources that they've taken from the earth, right? And so it's, and also you have manipulation when it comes to fuel, when it comes to energy because what oil producing countries can do, and they're members of what's known as the OPEC cartel, is decide we want to increase profits. So we're going to manipulate the cost by decreasing supply. We're not going to produce as much. And if there's less supply, more demand, well, then we can charge a lot more for for gas at the pump. And, And that's a big part of what's happening. Federal Reserve can't do a damn thing about that, nothing. Okay, Federal Reserve also can't do anything about inflation that we're experiencing when we go to the grocery store. Because think about groceries, think about the products that we buy. Those products need to be transported. And so high gas prices impact that as well, okay? So what can the Federal Reserve do by increasing interest rates? How would that tame the issue of inflation? Well, let's go to the next video and I'll break it down. 
If I understand what you've said and what economists are saying across the board is that when you raise interest rate, there's gonna be less money to invest. And that is, it's gonna dampen business investment. Is that a fair statement? I, I think the idea is to Makes it more moderate demand to invest. so that it can be in better balance with okay. supply. And this, so the current it's situation make it more demand is well in excess of if supply in some areas of our economy. More expensive to invest, which in turn is going to throw workers out of work, and when they're out of work, they have less money to spend. So Warren is not a proponent of increasing the interest rates, right? Because as she mentions there, it increases the cost of borrowing money. And if these companies are not able to borrow money at low interest rates, they're less likely to invest in their companies. I think the issue I have with Warren, where there's a disagreement, is that she seems to make this assumption that these companies and these corporations have been taking easy money that's been provided by the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. And then they've turned around and invested it in their company, not in the form of corporate stock buybacks, but invested it in their company to expand their company. But what we've seen with the Fed's monetary policy has actually been the exact opposite. Low interest rates has translated into these corporations um, essentially investing in themselves, buying shares of their own stocks. Uh, we've seen private equity firms buy up entire neighborhoods of single family homes that typically would go to ordinary working Americans. So the low interest rates have had a pretty disastrous impact on inequality in America. It has actually made inequality explode in the country. Where I do agree with Elizabeth Warren is that Raising the interest rates very likely will lead to an increase in unemployment. It will lead to some pain and suffering for ordinary Americans, especially in a country that lacks a social safety net to catch them when they fall. She is right about that. But the problem is that we've relied really at this point solely on the Federal Reserve to make decisions about the health of our economy. And these are typically well connected Wall Street folks who do have limited tools in their toolbox, as Warren pointed out earlier in the segment, but also tend to engage in policies that favor those at the very top. And we've seen that play out certainly since 2008. Now, I wanna get to this piece from the New York Times because it's it's definitely enlightening. And they argue that higher interest rates increase the cost of mortgages. So this will have an impact on ordinary Americans who might wanna take out a loan to buy a home. And company borrowing, which slows business growth and translates into less hiring. As the job market weakens, paycheck growth slows, which further tamps down buying. Less shopping gives supply a chance to catch up. So that's the idea. Uh, lower demand, increase supply, and we can combat inflation. But if what would need to happen for people to have even less money than they have now? I'm talking about ordinary people. Well, they'd need to lose their jobs or they would, if they're, they're jobless now, they're probably gonna be offered less money if they're looking for a new job. The challenge for many working families is that their wages might slow down before price increases do. Fed officials predicted last week that unemployment would begin creeping up by the end of the year, but that inflation would remain elevated at 5.2%. Rising rates have unsettled markets and prompted stock prices to plummet, chipping away at many household nest eggs. Higher mortgage costs are slowing the housing market and could lower home values, further cutting into wealth. Because for many families, real estate makes up a big chunk of net worth. So it's really easy to get caught up in what's happening in the economy at this moment, especially if you're unwilling to question how this system works, right? If you're unwilling to consider reforming how the system works. So number one, I think it's a problem that houses are considered really the only way for middle class, working class Americans to build wealth in this country. When housing is seen as a commodity, those who already own homes, don't want to build more homes because building more homes or increasing supply would mean the value of their home goes down. I think that's a problem. We need to reconsider whether it makes sense to see housing as an asset rather than something that people need to live and survive. The other the other issue is just, you know, 
it is a problem that this is impacting the stock market. And honestly, the stock market is overwhelmingly um, you know, invested in by people uh, who are very rich. So the top 10%, I think, make up 85% of those invested in the stock market. But there are ordinary working people who have their retirement accounts, their 401ks, their IRAs, whatever it is, um, invested in the stock market. So during a downturn, they really suffer. Which is why I think it makes a lot more sense to bolster our social security system, which is not tied to risk and is a safety net that people can rely on when they retire. Again, rethinking how this system works, because there are no easy answers for ordinary working Americans. You keep interest rates artificially low, that gap between the rich and the poor continues to increase. You address it and increase the interest rates. Well, then you're gonna have an increase in unemployment, again, in a country that has no social safety net in place to catch them when they fall. It is a broken system from top to bottom. And I don't see anyone really calling that out. I see all this debate about like, ooh, do we raise interest rates? Do we not raise interest rates? That is a limited thing that's part of our system that's actually caused a lot more harm than good. So. That's where I really disagree with Warren. Um, I'm curious to know what you guys think. So write in, send us your super chats, send us your member comments. Um, and I'm curious.